Do you? Yeah. Go for it. We got a BRZ radiator by CSF in a 17 STI. We put it in front, so we have lots of room for turbo up here. James with a pun right off the bat. So this is cool. I dig it. Looking good. So the BOC radiator in the front had to do some modification to the core sport, which is super cool in these because it bolts in. You just unbolt it and it comes out. Modify that a bit. <clears throat> you see, there's no hood. There's no hood latch in there anymore because this is getting pins anyways That's for really a drag all car. I had to do was cut the hood latch off. Yeah. I mean, it, fuck, it looks like it almost would without it fit still. A, without a bottom bar, I think it would fit in there. Yeah. Well, actually. Oh, yeah, because under that fucking thing. There, it'll fit. Yeah. So the hood latch will still fit. Shit, should I make that work? I probably. Build, build a bracket from the backside? Probably, yeah. Let's do that. Just a little something just to triangulate it. Yeah. Make it strong again. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be great. Let's absolutely do that. Yeah, it fits in between the fans. I didn't even realize that. It fits even, like, at an angle hanging down. That's cool. Yeah, that'd be sick. That'd be nice. So lots of roof of turbo in there. Look at all that space. And, and the heck, those are the fan shrouds already on here. Yeah, and those are Obviously, this thing's not going to have AC because he's got rid of that. It's a drag car. So. Um, but it's going to sit there and look pretty for now. We have from the front, end, front of timing cover seven inches. Seven inches? That's sweet. Sweet. And to like. Fake crank pulley, you have about five, five inch. inches, -ish, yeah. five and a quarter inches, roughly. Yeah. But this can be taken out, so that's that's you know another. Oh, there's no crank in that block. That's another. Oh, that's that's that. uh, it weighs like seventy-five pounds. It weighs like nothing. It's just the just the castings yeah. and the covers. Yeah. The cams, the head castings are empty, and the block is empty. So it's it's as light as it can get in the assembled. Nice. We need a 3D printed one. That's lame. We need a 3D printed block though. How is it you always stream when I want to watch something else that's live? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, what, what else is live that you're watching? Oh. Maybe I'll go watch it too. Tanner, I get to use a hood lap. Or did he leave already? He popped in to say, I want something else, and then left. I don't know. So we're going to do parallel feed on the other engine, and, and we'll return them to the regulator in parallel. So this will have to be moved a little bit, but that's not a big deal. That's a, Is that's this a bolted down? Anyway. Oh, yes, okay, sir. gotcha. That's funny. I got to see my shafts today for the dry sump. I did. The dry sump shafts, because they're only like, you know, seven inches long or whatever. Yeah, it seems small. A seven inch shaft. Fuck yeah, dude, that's gonna be badass. That's gonna be it sweet. Just contacts the shroud right here. Yeah. And it's not even a critical part of the shroud, so like no. things could be it's done a, for it's sure. A right there. Guy that covers news in an amusing way. He streams sure. for a few Excellent. hours at a shot. His handle is hard bastard. Okay, right on. Happy Australia Day. I didn't know it was Australia Day. It's, it's today the twenty sixth. Oh, 25th, 25th, okay. Hard bastard. I'll have to check that out. So anyways, what we did here is we try to make room for the low mount turbo and then other stuff that we're doing between getting that done. So I we're getting go, the cooling system right up. I can go on the inside of the cross member straight down. Yeah. 
Bingo. That'd be sweet. Bingo. Done. Fuck yeah. Easy. Yeah, I, I like gain it. I gain no extra clearance. I just go right in between those fan trails, right to the bottom. The little bracket right there. Now, would we do anything bolted on or... or because the radiator comes out from the front all the way, right? So the shrouds can come out from the front with it and everything? Okay. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll make sure that we're not, like, locking well, in there. So if you take this top piece off, the radiator can fold forward, and then it slides up. Gotcha. Perfect. And you can take this off. <clears throat> See you, Fox. <clears throat> but that's super cool. Yeah, that is cool. I like it. Because I was, like, not wanting to run hook pins either, because I don't like this. We'll have to. I was going to say, don't we have to anyway? With, uh, for time, time reasons, yeah. And for carbon fiber hoods, if you were to do that, you would have to be required. But with this, you can just put some tape on it, and you're good to go. Some 200 mile an hour tape, because it's only going to do like 165 in the quarter anyways, right? So. That's like what? Low eights? <laughs> yeah, I don't have to be that fast. 160? That's pretty fast. That's low eights. No, no, I'm saying I don't know if the car will oh, do 160. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Uh, I, like, I don't no, know. No, that's low eights, bud. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking of, but that's fast as shit. Look at this guy. EG33. Right. This, this is where you can do it or want me to kick this over? Uh, I'm going to put it right there because I'm going to pull the car in. Oh, okay. We gotta clean this old bitch. Cause she dirty. Yeah. This is really cool in the EG33. The coolant crossover has O rings and water ports here. These are water ports into the, the jacket on both sides, as well as the main crossover one. Yeah. Right down. I'm not here to slow you down to show the watch. That's what I want in the rear of my hatch. I assume you need an EG33. I want an EG33 in all the things. They're just big and beefy and, and heavy, unfortunately. How do you want to do that? Oh, I guess put it to the ground. Yeah, go ahead. Just set it on the, on, the, on the pin. I'll help you out. On the rear pin here. There you go. Bring it down. That's on the manifold first. Okay. Still not going to hurt it? Nope. Still? Yeah, I think so. It's pretty. It's on whatever it's on. Manifold and borrowing the bolts. Yep. The and then we'll just grab it and tip it up and yep. put it up on these blocks. And then. I think I'll do it like that. Are you gonna? Are you, what are you trying to do? I want to help, but you gotta tell me what we're doing here. I was gonna try and walk it. Oh, I'm gonna walk it. Oh no, you're good. The bolts are the bolts are in plenty. Yeah. Good. Just tip it up. You wanna make sure that's gonna. Catch uh, yeah. Once we get up. You got it. In there. Keep going. Oh. This that guy there is hitting this one. There we go. Right there. There we go. Now we're talking. A little more coolant coming out, but you know it's expected. I tip this other way. You wanna slide this. One this way more, so it's a little more stable. It's kind of back heavy. Okay, right there. Yeah, that's way better. Okay, cool. So I wanted, thank you. You're welcome. And I can pull the manifolds off. Pull the manifolds off, yeah, over here. I wonder if this is oil from the oil pan or if it's from the crank seal. Or the bad power steering pump. Oh, the power steering pump is leading to the top too. Yeah, yeah it's hard to say. Bad. Well, hopefully we figure it all out. <clears throat> this is really cool so this isn't even mounting this is shields I said shields oh I thought you said steel I was like, no, no shields Got it. to help keep the air in front of the radiator the pressure in front of the radiator doesn't bleed off too much yeah, there's a big there's a big, big yeah there's a big here. huge gap over there and over here and one thing people don't realize is heat exchangers operate from differential pressure across the heat exchanger, not just from exposure to air. You have to have differential pressure. So you've got to have a high pressure on this side, low pressure on this side. So in order to do that, we've got to trap the air in front of it, keep the high pressure in front of it, and then 
prevent air from pressurizing the engine bay. So without a, a, a scoop being blocked by a top mount, we gotta block it off, otherwise it'll pressurize the engine bay and make heat exchangers work less effectively. Or you do a top mount oil cooler or whatever, but you seal it to the scoop so that you can keep a low pressure engine bay. Use a lower tray on the bottom um, to help keep um, from pressurizing the engine bay from the bottom of the car. So you had that lower tray on there and you see a lot of them, they, they curve down. Whoop. And that's so the high pressure builds here. And then the velocity speeds up to the back of it, which helps create a low pressure region above the tray. Mm -hmm. and helps evacuate the engine bay. Which is also, here's your lower. Oh, you got the lower one there too. That's the lower one, I still have to trim it. But. Yep, it's pretty close though. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's real close. I just have to trim for the mount, just right here. Right. So yep, and that, that lower spot there helps keep the air high. It's, it's like having a splitter on the car. Yep. So that's, that's how that'll end up. Sweet. And then we might, we might point off of this depending on how bad this gap is with the bumper on. Right. But I'll leave, I'll leave the lower tray off so that we can see it. I'll put it up in the air and look under there and see what, see what it looks like. I think it's cool that the, you got to use the factory mounts that came on the radiator yes. for the condenser. Sweet, I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, and then you, you still, did you figure something else out or are you gonna stand this still? Um, I can still, I can run, so what I can run is I can run a coupler out here and then do a steel line that you don't take off right there is kind of what I'm thinking. Or not a steel line, but a you know hard pipe. For mm -hmm. this, this, this one isn't gonna work, unfortunately. Even with the EG33, even a factory upper hose or a the lower hose looks like it would work, but it still won't. The problem is, is it's over here, oh. not here. If it was like in this area, it would be, it would work with the EG33 because it's forward that blue mm -hmm. hose that I took off. Mm -hmm. But it's too far over. It's it's short by maybe three inches. Gotcha. So. Oh, yeah, where's the lower hose at? Oh, there. okay, it's that okay. one. That one will work. I mean, it's a little high though it's a little high but i think i think we should be able to like aftermarket hose that are you know they're a little bit longer mm -hmm. i think we'll be fine there because this what four inches higher than normal uh, and and yeah. four inches more forward yeah a little bit oh so i'm talking with the eg33 it'll work oh but not, not, with, EG. not with this no no gosh no. gotcha, gotcha. yeah we'll need to make something for the EG. yeah this this will all have to be totally set up but i was trying to make factory hoses work because we're moving the, the radiator forward Roughly about the same as the engine, so. Cool. Yeah. But this one, what I think is I'll just put a, a short coupler on it to get it out to here. And then do a hard pipe, just a straight coupler. And then leave that clamp on all the time. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to access it. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be just a hard pipe from here to there. But this end, I'm more stoked about that than anything. <laughs> It's so mounted again. The... Factory mounts upper. Yep. So this needs to triangulate to the bottom. Doesn't touch anything. Nice. Well, that just can't really ask for more than that. Nope. That works out perfectly. Yep. And then that upper shroud that we we're going to build, all I'll do is just cut out that section of it, and it'll all go back to normal. What's this? A... What's this? Yeah, and uh, BRZs appear to have the same plug for the fan. I don't know if it is. Isn't that the fuse panel inside the car? Kevin took that off. I don't know. I didn't take anything off. I think it's the fuse panel. It goes inside the, the fuse panel cover. I have no idea. All I know is I didn't take it off. It's a good spot for it. Let's see. Gotcha. Yeah, it's for the, the trim piece on the inside where the fuses go. Probably pulled it looking for a fuel pump fuse or something. But it's under the, it's in the engine bay. All right, I can go there. Sweet. I'm excited for this. I think we're going to put my white um, gram lights on this. I think the white gram lights might look pretty good on it. I think they look super good. Yeah. Well, we should, we should. Well, don't they have red letters on them? They do. There you go. Yeah, the white red letters. I think it would look sweet with the red letters and the, the white wheels. Gotta, gotta give Mike a good deal on them. All right. Can't have a video with that.
that in my ugly face. <laughs> Here, I'll record you, record me. There you go. How, how high school is that shit? Recording. Yeah, recording. The recording. It's recording squared. So, yeah, I am. Um, it kind of blocked off a lot of my day. Let's see. Oh, I got some stuff going for you. La, 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 some text. Let's see. Mid engine esque GRB G33 with power ducting and cooling, active air, etc. Once you get proper side paycheck in the next couple of years. Yes, so that is really cool. I have often thought about that. Um, the problem with the, uh, like a GR, there's no fucking room. You try and put a, a, a trans in there, and um, the engine is like where the seats are in the front. You got to. Uh, You'd have to go to more of a rear engine setup, like a Porsche transaxle or something. Um, but using a transmission for a mid-engine, the seats are too far back in the Subaru. You, well, at least with the Impreza platform, you, it, there's no room. Um, I've seen it in the Legacies. And I'm sure you could probably figure something out, but I think much room. Especially not for an EG, because it's so long. Um, might go to an EZ, but even then, the transmissions are pretty long, typically. These are still like two inches longer than these guys. Yeah. Without but, accessories, just. But I definitely want to do like a, a mid-engine Subaru. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I actually want to do it with the SVX. I thought it'd be cool to do with the SVX, since it's got that fucking glass and that short pointy nose, anyways. Thought it'd be neat to do something like that, or to. You could run a six-speed and just take the rear output out of it. Yeah, well, that's what some people do. It's harder to do on the six-speed though. I forget what the reason for it is, because right. you have to. Um, you have to weld this, you have to get a center diff that you weld up. Yeah. Um, because you got to lock in that output shaft. It's just the sixes are, you know, so they're longer than the high speeds even. Yeah. By another five inches or something. Well, yeah, you, you can wrong. absolutely do well, it. Well, you plate it where the rear is. You have to put support bearings in. Yeah, and then you have to figure out a way of getting the shafts. You have to attach the, um, the front pinion to the driven shaft. Because it floats inside of it. So you have to yeah. wear the center so difference. So you can just do an internal spline, external spline. Well, it's, it's both externals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but both shafts have. Yeah, yeah. just a collar. It would be staffed. It, and, and that's if what. You have a support bearing on the back of that, and then you can flat plate, and you don't have that much of extension hazard. Right. Yeah. You can do it with the five speeds because it's easier. Um, so you, you theoretically do it with the six speed. <clears throat> But I was thinking about what the SVX was putting my Corvette transaxle in it, making it rear-wheel drive with my T56 out of my C5. Torque tube setup? Short, the, short the torque tube, yeah, short the torque tube in it, and and put something cool in the front of the SVX. Yeah, cool, you have a whole subframe too. Yeah, I have all put the, the whole shit. Thing in it. Yeah, I got the whole C5. And if you left the leaf spring in it, you wouldn't have to worry about coil mounts or any of that bullshit. Yeah, leave that's your, true. Leave your lateral leaf yeah, in it. You I don't have do to worry that. about bracing the body for all that stuff. I just you have just... to do the upper control arm mounts and then uh, a damper. Does the upper Is control our... arm go to the chassis or to the frame? Yeah, to the chassis on the C5. The lower goes to the frame and the upper goes to the chassis. So you could do... But, the, but they're flush bolts. They're flush bolted ones. Yeah. Yeah, and so I could easily make plates on the, in an SVX for that. That's not a big deal. Yeah, but I thought that'd be really cool. Yeah. I still have a front engine on it. Um, also was the the possibility of making it mid-engine with the transmission yeah. from the Corvette, you, you know, because this the clutch is in front, but you could put a bell housing on the yeah. transmission at the back, yeah. and then put don't an they have a pilot in. bearing on them too? Oh uh, yeah, the stub shaft that comes out has a pilot. It looks like a regular input shaft. Yeah, it's it's, uh, but it's longer. It's not a bearing though; it's a bushing. Yeah, but yeah, but same, it same attaches. Deal. So you, you could technically do it on the front of that trans. It's just a little long. Because the rear diff is on the end of it, mm -hmm. instead of being integral like the Subaru would be, you know, the diff is in the front of it. But it'd be a lot of fun. I wanted to do that. I wanted to do that in my '94 Legacy wagon, the '94 era, the the second gen Legacy wagons that are kind of the soft, you know, yeah. the step roof, like my JDM BG5, yeah. you know, the BG. Those things would look so sweet with fucking 15-inch tires in the back of them, just the way the body lines are, and then from the back. If the wheels and tires came in three quarters of the way into the, you know, with just a pumpkin and fucking rubber in the back, yeah, those wagons cool. would look so sweet. And then. Well, those were pretty light too, because they were like nothing to them. Yeah. Yeah, mine was fun. I love mine. My little BG5, I think it was a blast. And they just, it's a, it's a cool looking wagon. And I think 
that with a with a mid engine and gigantic fucking tires would would be a wheelie monster and that'd be sweet too. But wheelie bars on it, just do wheelies in the legacy all day. <laughs> I think that'd be a fucking ride. Um, I originally you thought. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but no, if, if if I did, if I did an LS in front of a transmission like that with rear wheel drive like that, it would be freaking sweet. Of course, you'd have an engine at your elbow. But maybe it'd, it'd be blast. Shorten that fucker. It'd be cool. If you guys haven't seen this, I'm gonna show you this here. This is pretty cool. This is uh, ow. There's a drill bit there though. Stab me in the hand. This is the throttle body for an Audi S7, which is a 4.4 liter V8. I believe this went turbo even. I don't recall, honestly. I don't know much about the, the Audis, but this um, drive-by-wire throttle body can be operated by the M-Tron, which is what I'm running on a bunch of cars. It'll be operated by Halt, I guess. We'll see. Like, everything could fucking run other brands of throttle bodies. The Subaru one is special, though. The Subaru is like the only th dry bar throttle body where both voltages on the TPS sensors climb, which is like against the entire industry. Almost every other manufacturer, if not every other manufacturer, uses a dry by wire TPS sensor inside the motor where one of them goes up in voltage and one goes down in voltage as the throttle opens and, uh, and consequently as it shuts too, right? Because others can go up or down. So Subaru, however, they both go up. They have different starting points and one of them has less voltage one of them only uses like two and a half volts going up the other uses like three and a half volts going up which is really interesting um and so that's one reason why getting different throttle bodies for a subaru is so freaking hard because the voltages don't behave like any other engine or manufacturer on the market which is pretty interesting so when you go to a standalone that's more than capable of running all the different drive by wire systems you get the ability to put whatever the hell you want on there and this is the cable throttle for an SVX. It's a dual inlet throttle body as well, but it's cable. And I'm using a VA, you know, drive a wire setup. Man, that is bulky, huh? There's an idle control motor up top, then the cable throttle and all that shit all in here. TPS over here, that's just a big setup. Well, here's the same thing. I mean, the drive by wire does idle control um, and it has two, two ports on it. Actually, it has two intake air temp sensors too, which I think is interesting that it's intake air temp sensors, bank to bank, but that's how they have it. I can only assume they have some air water intercoolers that come off of here on both sides, and that's why they have IATs on each bank. But what's really interesting about it, even though this is smaller, which is kind of a bummer, it's a little smaller here, this side is the same. It's the same bore. This outer bore is the same as this guy. Um, Pretty close at least it's like really really close almost the exact same so here's the gasket for the eg right here and you can see it's the same bore spacing too so it's the exact same bore spacing and nearly the exact diameter the only thing that's off is five of the six bolts damn it five of the that one's perfect and then these guys are all off so we're just going to put a plate on the front of the manifold fill in the other holes redrill to the right size and tap it and then you use that throttle body. So we're going to use the factory. You need That's fine. Like yeah, because it's because it's right here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Half inch is fine. There we go. Yeah, that half inch piece of aluminum, and then we'll attach it to the front of the manifold. See what? Double gasket. You want to do that? Inside and outside. Yeah. And just bolt through it. Well, we can't bolt through it. Okay. Because these bolts overlap. Yeah, so if I weld that, where's the... Oh, you mean weld the manifold in, well, re-drill the manifold. The manifold. Wait, wait, re -drill the manifold for that. Sure, we can do that. Yeah, or just weld the plate to the manifold. So it's kind of hard to get to on this side. Oh, because it gets, it gets yeah. like, narrow? So on this edge right here, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty tight to the runner. So, like, the runner's almost flat with it. So it'd be really, I don't know. Sure. I think it'd be harder to do that than just fill the holes and redrill and tap. Do you, you want to? Do you want to drill the holes out and punch in, press in a stud and then rose weld it, and then mill it and then redrill, or how do you want to do it? Because obviously, if you do, just start trying to fill with rod. You have lots of pockets and shit in there. But if we drill out a certain size and punch a dowel in each hole, 
So my thought was, is I was just gonna drill out maybe like three eighths of an inch with a half inch drill bit. So just step them in a little bit with like a half inch drill bit. Then I can get in there and then build the hole back up, right? Mm -hmm. Then we'll have to deck that flat, you know, as best we can. And then we'll have to run two Audi gaskets and just re-drill everything. Okay. But yeah. honestly, I mean, you only need you know, three inches of close. engagement, half inch of engagement and threads. Right. It's not like this, you know, it all gets both, you know, 10 foot tons of torque. It doesn't have a throttle cable and stuff pulling on it. So no, yeah, it's just, just it's, it's all literally modern. just sitting. It's kind of the, 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 the hoses. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, in that case, we could, instead of having to weld in from the bottom, just do That's, dials. Yeah. Well, so if you drill it out. Because we, we can drill out or even mill it out. And well, I wasn't going to drill. Bottom. I wasn't going to drill all the way through. I was just going to drill until you had a little shelf in the back of it, mm -hmm. and then refill in the half-inch hole, so you get almost full penetration. You know, almost full penetration. Right. Because yeah, I can't weld three quarters of an inch in a quarter-inch hole. I'm only going to get in maybe a quarter of an inch, right? Mm -hmm. But if I drill this out to a half-inch hole, I can get to the back of this, you know, to the inside of that hole. And I don't remember exactly what the EG33, if they're blind or if they're open holes. I think they're blind holes. So potentially I could just drill down a half an inch all the way to the bottom. Now, what if we go bigger, like significantly bigger, and put like a bigger dowel in it to where like we're actually drilling into the dowel to get the mounts? And then you like punch it in there and then... I'm just trying to think of a method that provides us with fewer potential pockets, holes, and issues with, you know, cast aluminum header, trying to weld shit into cast aluminum header, you know, and how, how dirty that can be. And cast aluminum welds really good. Especially the problem how is, bad is this... it's porous, so it soaks up oil. Right. So if you bake it out, it's perfect. So the, the cast aluminum has to be really good quality aluminum, otherwise it would be absolute shit. Right. Right, so castings are actually really good quality aluminum, and they're done really well. But it's been in an engine bay for a long time. But it's so you want to hit with a so torch for a while? Or? Yeah, so we got to bake it. we got to get it like 300, at least at the area that we're doing, right. for like a sustained 300. Got to flash mm. as much oil out as we can. But we should be fine. I don't see any problem with it. Okay. That way we don't have to like modify this or do anything. Yeah, no, I, I don't think we have to modify this at all. I think if we just get enough of a plate and okay. then enough mounting. Hey, Tigor. Hey, you're on camera. What's up, dude? What you got going on? You bought me N-Tanks. N-Tanks? Mm -hmm. Oh, for your intercooler. Can I see if this will work? Where'd you get those from? eBay. eBay? <laughs> like hey, man, the aluminum's aluminum. They're too long, so I might have to cut like okay. 15 inches. That's totally fine. That's fine. You can just square it up anyways, and then it'll have... 120 bucks. 120 bucks each yeah. or for the Cheaper pair? Cheaper than I can do it. both of them. Oh, nice. It's a good deal. Yeah, fuck yeah. Cheaper than I can do it. And where's your core at? It scores over there now? Uh, it's, on, it's in that cardboard box. On oh, I see it under the cams. Gotcha. Yep. And what core was that? Vibrant, Vibrant right? Oh, okay. Cool. Well, I got some messages in chat. Let's see what we got here. How's the Michi doormat holding up? I don't know. How is it? Where'd it go? He it... took it. You wanted it back. Oh, really? Yeah. Whoops. Uh, CSF for the win. Still haven't hooked up my oil cooler five years later. <laughs> Which oil cooler? The CSF based one or the factory one? Pushing the rad forward would be nice. I have to take my rad out to make, take my timing covers off. Yeah, you wouldn't have to do that anymore. Uh, that's what I was originally thinking. Here it is. Yeah, Yeah, dude. Yeah, Nick. That would be... Um, yeah, no more, no more taking anything out for, for covers. Oh, here we go. What's going on? No, oh, yeah. Lower. No. Oh, it's going to be lower. He's just showing you how much room there is. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be all the way down Plus, the middle. These are full height BRZ fans. You can get the swim fans, which are like half this depth. <clears throat> For even more space. And I already know how to do it now. I think we'll just do the half thing like said. Here, let's do this because this is smart. And then we'll run the pipe. That's what all the fuck boys do. Yeah, yeah the, the longer the up pipe, the better. That's what I heard. We should cut the light out too. Oh, that's a good idea. For the you don't need lighting. Nor filters. Filters are overrated too. It's all trash. What turbo is that? 3071. Oh, that's the old one off of the silver car? Yeah, Gen 1. Yeah. yeah it's a GTX so Gen 1. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be fucking badass. I'm pretty excited about it. I got the, the block off plate for this already done, and then I gotta build this. Check this out. Latch still. Yep. That was unintentional. That just happened. 
<laughs> I was like, how about this latch, dude? And he was like, I don't know if it'll I fit. I looked in there and I was like, wait, wait a second. Oh, shit, it might fit. There's a lot of room in there. This is the turbo setup that's going in it. Still working on the pipes, obviously. I'm going to change so the fire and this and reverse them to put this one on the back and this one on the front to get it turned tighter and away from the oil pan that's going to go into there. So this was one of the prototype ones. And then <clears throat> after fucking with it and using different oil pans on the bottom, figured out a way of utilizing the um, 2010 Legacy pan can actually fit in here with a little bit of modification. Um, uh, not with a factory cross member, I should say. It needs a cross member for a, like a TSS fab cross member or something, but um, it'll almost clear a factory cross member. Really close. So we're going to get a TSS fab one. It gives us the extra quarter inch that's needed in the back of the oil pan. Put the 2010 Legacy pan on here because it stays low for a while before it pops up in the back. All these runners will go over it. It'll all work really nice. And then this one. Actually, this one's coming out. This isn't the one that's going here, right? This is going in Igor's car, or whose car? Yes, that's Igor's car. Yeah, that's one that's over Right, because the, the one that's going to go here is the 40. 42. The GTX 40. 1200. Or GT 40 now. So it's not, the 40 only is in a T4 twin scroll. Currently, they only offer them in twin scroll. I mean, that's okay. Which we can do. I can split the bank. Right. Um, or we can run the direct bolt-in 4212. The, the 4212 has got the D-band? Yes, and they have the and same dimensions. They're still a mid frame. So it's both. I, I really would like to try the 40, but, I mean, I guess 42 it is. Fuck it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if it's, if it's too much, then we, we rethink it, right? If it's too much, we just use more anti-lag. So I'm going to flip this manifold, like you said, because basically it gets my... If my runners in the front are the this one. short ones, so if we flip it how we said, yep. I make up the difference in this tube right here because this is the only difference between the runners. Mm -hmm. This length here, mm -hmm. um, the angles are roughly the same. This pipe is exactly the same. The only difference is this. That's the difference in equal length. Mm -hmm. But if we flip them, oh right, I get to basically half this on both of them. So I get. Even Those closer to equal. equal. Yeah. Nice. Which on a short runner manifold is not as critical. Right. But everything helps. Absolutely. So the, the less total pipe we use, the better. Mm -hmm. what, what is this? Is this 10S? Or what is this? Yeah, it's a 321 10. Okay. 10. And this is a 1.5 in it? Yeah, or is this the. And, and if you look in that port, it's literally perfect. Yeah. This factor port's one and a half. Yeah. yeah. So the, those drawings I made were, was for this exact thing here. Four inch long, 10S that I, I gave the machinist so he could... So do we have any of these lengths of this? Straight? We have a little bit, yeah. A little bit? Because if I can give him the, the lengths for it, then he can cut us six of them. So we need to... Or I need to make an order today before we go home. Okay. So we'll put that on the list of shit to get. Sweet. And this this height right here is less than a killer bee fan. As it says. As it is, less than a killer Oh, because the space is off. That's back to being. Yeah, right. now it's it's less by like almost half an inch than a killer bee Jordan Taylor asks, would that not be an ideal candidate for your upcoming dry sump system? <laughs> well, Jordan Taylor, you're absolutely right. This is the, the car that I am that's making the, the dry sump for. <laughs> yeah, this is the exact one that's, that it's made for, this car here. So it's going to get that with this, um, with the dry sump. That was the whole point. Um, that actually is... This car is actually the one that's driving the timeline on the dry sump. So, yes, you are correct. It is the ideal candidate. <clears throat> and Nightfire says, you know, that low mount looks sick. I agree. <laughs> I agree. It's going to take, like I said, a few more changes. Um, and the oil pump's gone right now, but there was an oil pump on here. This strap here bolts to the lower oil pump thing where the, the cooler normally goes to. So, like, the whole system is mounted really well. Um, super cool. We're still going to reverse these and change the direction of firing order on this one direction to the other. Um, and that'll, like, like he was talking about, make the pipes more equal length, provide us more clearance for the oil pan, and do all the kinds of cool things. So. Um, we're, we're excited about that. But we got so many projects going on at once. Like, I have so many... Fuck, you my own projects at home? Like, too much stuff. Um, parts designs, right? The battery tie-down, the which is being machined right now. Um, I had the prototype. I picked it up last night, tested it. It was off a smidge. So I made a couple, a couple tweaks to it. 
and they made a couple other changes to make the machining easier on it because machine time is always a factor in cost of a part. So reduce the machine time on it by making a couple changes. Um, and then, and then, um, uh, part of the thing I got distracted by that thing. Uh, and then picked up a bunch of fittings for my cooling mods and all of that. So, um, schedule 10 pipe is, but 10 S is different. So 10 S is different than regular schedule 10. Nothing? No, I'm not stressed. I'm good. I'm, a, I'm barely, I'm exhausted, man. I've not been sitting well. I am live, yes. I think I said, am I alive? And I'm like, no, not barely. There's 10 million people watching? Yep, 10 million. Yeah, they, they only put one. 11 million. million. We gained a million yeah, that left. quick. Yep. Oh, they left. Oh, they, it's probably my voice. Yeah, it's you pissed off, you pissed off a million people at once, dude. I have a puppet. Say what? I have a puppet I'll bring tomorrow. Yeah. Everyone loves the puppet. It'll make the dealership go a lot. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I've seen it. He's he's filming himself, but and secretly you, and, and, I keep and, coming into angle here. And you do that ventriloquism thing you yeah. got going on there, yeah, it's, it's really Roger. poorly. Not poorly. I'm really well, good. Yeah. At he's it. like he's like. Hi, hey, I'm Roger. No. You can see that. That's not how it goes. <laughs> that's not even what Roger sounds like. Uh, I think that's exactly what Roger sounds I feel like. like. You're trying to steal my thunder. I right think now. that's exactly what he sounds he's like. Stealing my thunder. Yeah. This is my moment. Thunderstruck. Yeah. Okay, so what the fuck's up with this car right here? Is that why there's coolant everywhere? Yes. I can. I it also came in with the uh, oil level low. It's like two and a half quarts low. Oof. It's on the low dot on the dipstick. So we pressure tested it, didn't find anything. This is from when they had an explosion happen. Mm. They said they put a water pump in it, still mm -hmm. heated. I think they just didn't bleed it properly because these NAs suck to bleed. Mm -hmm. And Lane topped it up the other day and let it bleed for a while, and it was a little low from then, but not much. So I'm going to bleed it again and see what happens. Oh, no. from the project, yeah. hmm. That's it. So how do they know it's overheating? Well, I mean, These have a light on the dash. Yeah, just a light. Yeah. yeah. So if it could be a steam pocket that goes by the sensor, and it's like, ah! Yeah. yeah. So. Is the cap good? Just the cap? Yeah, the cap's fine. Holds 17 PSI. Gotcha. Yeah, so why is it here today? It's been here for like two weeks. Out front? Oh, okay. Guy called and asked about it. We're supposed to get to it, but I, I didn't see it on the schedule, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" I'm trying to do these projects. So I was saying, oh yeah, battery tie down, which I had to do some stuff too. The um, dry sump. I got to see the shafts today for the dry sump. They finished the shafts. Well, they just initial machining. They take them to get ground. They got to grind, get, get ground. Um, so the the last three thousands get ground off the shaft, and then they'll cut the keyways in them. Um, picked up some fittings. Looks like going on pipes for the header that we're doing for the EG. Um, just lots of stuff going on. Plus, my like, Corvette's taken apart because I'm putting a blower in the Corvette. We're doing a C6 blower off of Igor's Corvette. It's Igor, where'd he go? Igor, he bought a C6 Grand Sport with like. What? Your your car, your, your Corvette. What about it? It's a uh, it's a uh, uh, eleven yes. transport, eighteen thousand miles. Yes. What'd you pay for it? What? How much you pay for it? Thirty six. Thirty six. What a fucking bargain! What a good way to go. So he did um one in the same. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any desire to have that larger primary. I want the primary to be smaller, like 1.5, 1.55, somewhere in that range. A 1.77 primary is way too fucking big. Not a whole lot of point to doing that. <clears throat> um, so Igor got a C6 Grand Sport with hardly any miles. Had a built motor. It had, I mean, this car had all of the right parts in it, but it was put together so poorly. It was bad. It was really bad. The piss in the wall was off. The bearing clearances were off. The it's, it, and it had it had fucking boost line rods in it. It had JE pistons. It had um, these really expensive link bar roller lifters in it. I forget which ones they were. Not Jezel, but another really 
popular company. Um, had a custom cam, had the Edelbrock blower on it. it, just had a bunch of stuff, and it was fast. It fucking ripped. And um, he said it's too fast. And it smells like oil. So he didn't want any of that shit. He wanted it all gone. He wanted a mostly stock engine with the cam in it and uh, just keep his ported heads. So he's getting my cam out of my Corvette, the gnarly cam. And I put that in his Corvette. I'm getting the cam that was in his car because it's a blower cam and my cam is not a blower cam. <laughs> Way too much overlap for a blower cam. And then uh, Chase got my blower and Chase got my old heads. I got the new heads we bought for the LS3 so that the, the blower will bolt to mine. Igor's getting Chase's manifold. Um, yeah, it's just we're, we're, we're swapping parts back and forth between the three Corvettes. It's pretty funny. So in the end, we'll have an NA Corvette that rips. That's his. We'll have a root style blower Corvette that I, from him that's on my car, so that'll rip. And then Chase's has a centrifugal blower on it. Um, it's a Novi 1500 right now. But then once uh, once he gets used to that power and we turn in some times with that, then we're gonna upgrade to the bigger the bigger cartridge um, for that blower. So it's uh, we have three Corvettes in slightly different configurations. Um, I'm also sending, um, Igor found me a Grand Sport transmission from a C6, because I hate the gear ratios of the Z06 transmission that I got. I fucking hate them. So Igor found me a, a Grand Sport tranny, which has ratios much closer to what my C5 had. And I'm gonna send that off to get face plated. So I'll have a face plated tranny in that thing and that should fucking rip. It's be a good time. We might end up doing like a this car too, really. We probably should. It's not gonna last this long. What do you mean? You know, like the ETS blower on them will stuff and it stretches the trim. Stretches what? The power one. So you're not referring to the face plate, and you're just saying when we have rebuild it, because we'll have to, yeah. then that's okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was confused because I saw the face plate. Yeah. It's not gonna last. I'm like, what are we talking about now? Yeah. <clears throat> so it's gonna be a good time. We're, we're having a good time. So, anyways, I got that project going on. I'm trying to get my my red STI sold. I gotta get that sold. Um, so that's happening. And then my RS is. Uh, does my RS get pushed in tonight? Yes. My RS is out front. No, um, it's in. Oh, it's over there now. Oh, okay. We don't have to move it again. Good. It was out front. Um, and we're doing the turbo kit on that too, so we just have a lot of shit going on, high tune projects going on. And so I've been getting some severe anxiety lately, not getting a whole lot of sleep. So he is currently working on another shroud, right, for the radiator? We are on a shroud for the radiator. Um, well, you ever work with high grip tensioner system? Yes. Wait, what's the high grip tensioner system? You mean for the timing belt? If you start with a time belt, yeah, it's, it's not. A, it doesn't give a shit what time belts in it. It doesn't matter for that. Um, <laughs> looking forward to well, the innovation. Uh, what do I think about that the, mod? The I'm not sure what mod you're talking about. The the high grip tensioner system. Um, I mean, there's a few that that slip, you know, or jump. It's not super common. I right? just happen all the time. So, but if you're if you're banging gears, right? So, let's 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 address that question more directly. Okay, so you're asking about the high grip tensor system. So, what causes the belt to jump, right, or skip? One of the big things that cause it to skip is shifting very quickly. So, when you're shifting your cams and the gears and your crankshafts and your accessories, everything are spinning, and there's inertia in those. Now, if I very rapidly slow the crankshaft down, then all those other things are pulling on it. The accessories are pulling on the, on the, the um, crank pulley. The cams are pulling on the belt, right? Everything is pulling. But the difference is, is that in acceleration, the crankshaft is pulling those cams. Then all of a sudden, we slow it down. And so if we slow it down, the belt that was tight and stretched, because they stretch as you accelerate, now it unstretches really quick. Um, <clears throat> and so you can get 
basically like a, a springing effect in the cams as, the, as the, their weight's going and also they are under tent of being pulled and then they're not pulled anymore then their inertia is just let free and then the belt kind of bounces and then you get this wave in there and that wave can carry through the system and cause cams to jump so by having that high grip system what you're trying to do is increase the amount of belt wrap around the the, the, the crank there to keep that wave from jumping the belts over one of the teeth on the crankshaft fully. Um, or also minimize that wave from getting to that in the first place and then hitting the tensioner and then fucking up, not the tensioner, the, uh, the, the guide around the, the, the part, the guide in the front of the oil pump. That wave hitting that guide and tearing the belt as well. So if you keep it all tight and down and around that crank bully, you have less chance of it skipping all that. So in a car where you have, say like, a dog box or a sequential transmission or you're doing a lot of road racing, you're doing a lot of drag racing and you have really fast shifts. <laughs> Someone's trying to kill me. When you have really fast shifts, then something like that is absolutely beneficial because you minimize the chance of the belt jumping on you. Uh, one of our customers was just autocrossing with his 05 STI and the belt jumped on him. So I don't know if that would, having that would have kept his belt from jumping. Um, and fucking his motor up because it messes motor up but maybe you know i don't know if it jumped on the cams first because it's not going to help the cams much it's not mainly for jumping around the crankshaft so i don't know if, if his particular car jumped around the camshaft jumped on the crankshaft or what um but i mean help is help i guess so what's my opinion on it it might work that's my opinion on it, it might work i don't see it hurting any and if I could minimize the, the chance of the belt jumping in quick shifts, then it's probably pretty good. But if you're if you're on a daily driver and you're just shifting your manual pretty quick, you know, with your clutch and and all of that, yeah, you probably won't need it. So, what up? Matt says I'm in Seattle. Watch my wife spend too much money on shoes. I'll catch up on this one later. I'm just bored and figured I'd say hi. Well, you know, Matt, if you can. Bankrupt the family in car parts, I guess Vegas and bankrupt the family on, sh on shoes. <laughs> Who's talking about shoes? Uh, Matt, he just messaged and said that face shoe shopping and spending way too much money on shoes. And I, and I said that's why I feel the same way on car parts. So let's see what, what he's doing here. So what's this one for? This is the uh, upper... The upper piece that you're going to bend down? Yep. Okay. Now I'll have nails in there. Oh, yeah. And I'll have to cut out a section for the uh, uh, back in the afterwards. So what's the leading edge? Um, so this is uh, core support. This is bumper support. This will have the arc in it. Okay. And this is the... Vertical section. Yep. Semi-vertical section. Yes. Yep, I got gotcha. you. And how much of a radius you got on that? Uh... Uh, I'm going to do it on car. So I'm going to bend it, oh, bend stick it. it on there, and then trace, trace it on the side of it. And then gotcha. it out. Makes sense. It'll be, the way that it's done will be, I can, I can cut it in my band saw. So what's that, uh, what's that bend, like 75 degrees? I don't know. You got a protractor? No. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's check it. Well, actually, no, no. Oh. But, but Tanner has a... Okay. So I can get somewhere close to it. It's not super thin. It just needs to be somewhere close. Right. Because this is well, super thin. This is pretty thin this here. This is super so. thin, so I can work it a little bit. Oh, okay. I'm going to say, but also, this is a thin area. So if you get it off, it's going to be too short. You get the lines are too long. So you definitely need to be pretty close. Yeah. <clears throat> I feel cold coming in. Yeah. Here's Chase's C6, Grand Sport. That's my chin. Both of them. Blowing up. No heads. All right. All right.
you like your blazer? I like it. Are you doing a live video? I am live, yeah. But you're not on it, so you're good. Unless you want to be. All right. Hi, well, how you doing? I'm taking yeah, what are you doing back there? He was on his watch. Playing on your tablet? What are you playing? What is it? She's watching YouTube videos. She said party management something. No, talking Angela. She doesn't oh. actually play it. She just watches YouTube videos. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going with us to get camp? Uh, no. Oh, is that what you're doing? Yeah. You're picking up for school? Yeah. So you like the blazer? Yeah. It's good? Yeah. Did you finally figure out why that tire light was on? Um, yeah. Did he not tell you the story? No. Ben told me why my tire light was on. What did he say? Ben was like, you, he started laughing. He was like, you got aftermarket wheels? And I was like, no. Those are stock. And so I called Chase. I was like, why is Ben asking me this? Like, why is he being annoying? <laughs> Chase is like, actually. Yeah, we did that weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we, put the, we, we put the wheels and tires on it weeks ago and the the, the wrong sensors for the system. I know, system. the light yeah. popped on and Chase was like, yeah, I think that the sensor is just bad. Yeah. But he told me you guys did an oil change because you told him it had to be done it at did a thousand be done. miles. He didn't change the oil. I know we did. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he was like, you know, telling me about the car and that he had to do the, do the thing. I'm like, well, you need to do an oil change on it anyway. So yeah, I told you to do that. I was like, no, but you should have done it like a thousand miles ago. And he was like, oh, I forgot about that. I didn't realize that. So I was like, well, you need well, to get the oil change anyway. Well, done it. Oh, you didn't do it? No. Oh, that bum. I know. That's the thirty-eight percent remaining. Right. He needs to change it, yeah. but apparently one thing at a time. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I brought my little tool, but it wouldn't activate him for this system. In 2020 to 2021, they changed the frequency that they've done with two-point sensors. It would have been nice to know because my tire was Right. So put air in it. He just did. That's why I'm here. I know. <laughs> All right. Have fun. Get your kid, Thomas and I. Okay. <clears throat> That's a funny story. She was complaining about how bad the factory tires were in the snow. Because they were. They were pretty bad. And um, <clears throat> so she wanted snow tires. So we got her snow tires. But we didn't tell her. And uh, for like a few days at least afterwards, she was complaining that they still didn't have snow tires on it. And of course, we were giggling because we put them on there. But Tire Rack, Tire Rack gave us teep mess sensors for a 20, uh, 21, and it doesn't work. So they wouldn't activate at all, uh, which is a bummer. But anyways, funny, funny. <clears throat> That's pretty funny that Ben had to tell her that she had wheels on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we made it a week without her noticing. Um... And the tire pressure light was on and everything, and she just had no idea because she blindly trusted me like a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Her, well, her, her, her ex ends up finding it out, and it's like, oh, you already put wheels on there, huh? And she's like, no. And he's like, <laughs> are you sure? Said. And she's like, those like, are stock. And she's she like, yeah, like, those are stock. I paid extra for the 20-inch Redline editions. <laughs> he's like, those aren't 20 inches. Yeah, they're not 20 inches yeah. at all. They're 17s. So then she tells me all this stuff, and I was like, Someone stole your wheels? Yeah, I was like, babe, I gotta, I gotta let you know the secret. That's that funny. Fun one. Yeah. Like, you didn't know those, those aren't 20s anymore? <laughs> well, I wouldn't expect her to know exactly. Right, I've been lying to my girlfriend, yeah. my wife, that 9 inches yeah. is this, so I get it. Yeah. I convinced her that 6 inches is 3 inches bigger than what it really is. Right. Time, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame girls not for understanding size. Yeah. Us guys are always fucking it up for them. <laughs> <clears throat> Transmission coffin. Is that what you thought that, that Tia was saying? Bam, done. It's going to be that him. wide at the bottom? Call him, come get it. Yeah. I wish I could go all the way out to here. I might actually build something. I might actually weld something onto this edge once it's down here to GR is try to get behind this headlight a little bit. All the GR stuff, it's easier. Yeah. Oh, this is pretty easy. The VA thing is pretty easy. I like how the whole radiator sport unbolts and everything instead of being welded in. So this, doing it again, I could be here in about four hours. 
Now that you know what to cut. Now that I know exactly what to do. Right. Plus, I saved every template I have. Sweet. So I have yeah. everything to do again. Sweet. I, stop, so I have what? these bracket the templates. Wants to yeah. use it. What? Follow it up with something so it doesn't go wet. I've you been grinding it. into the air casing compressor, so that's cool. Then what? Into the AC I would, compressor. I would seal that stuff so it doesn't get nasty. In case he ever wants it. Oh, the the, yeah. the core. Well, if we have a dry sun pump, it's not gonna work. Right. He's just saying that to cover it though, so we don't ruin the core. Yeah. On his 17. Yeah. No, I agree. Actually, I have his old his old lines. I'll just cut them off and weld the whole shut and pull back on there. Three. Looks me. One. That looks so sweet. That was awesome. Yeah, he's, I'm trying to talk Igor into doing this on his car. Yeah, this is pretty sweet. But he would lose AC. I already lost AC. Oh. No, because we can do... I think we can put a 35 up in here, Tom. A what? I think we can put a G35 up in here. Higher? Yeah, because we gained at the top, right? The radiator took forward, so I think we can put a G35 like a top mount style front. Gotcha. It's getting kind of clean. Have you checked the needle huh? over It's getting there? a lot cleaner. I'm out of, I'm out of degreaser, so this is about as good as you're going to get. Oh, that looks like, great. Yeah. Do you like that, though? Yeah, this one is a lot better than it was. Fucking A. No, I don't have my... Oh, my work phone is here. It's on someone's table. Sorry about the, the shaky video there. I left my work phone here yesterday. Like a Dumas. What do I do with it? Here. I don't know if it's charged. Oh, good. My FCP Euro orders after delivery. About fucking time. Dude, FedEx is the worst, man. I ordered, that is, that is just crap, man. Dude, they're absolute worst. I ordered um, new end links for the front of the Beamer because they're clunking. And it, they sat in Illinois for like a week. I, I try it when I do orders here and any of my own, I make sure to try and do UPS. Yeah. They're, they're way better. I mean, they all suck, but they're, they're way better. And our driver's good. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna make a phone call. I'm gonna call this guy up and see if we can use his brake. See what he's got. Hey dude. Uh, yeah, how you doing? Look at that. I I just got notification today from Link. They're saying that they that they got it. So I'm not sure what took them so long, but they just got the, the ECU today. So yeah. Um. So the reason I'm calling is not that though. I'm calling because I want to know if we can. Do you have a manual brake that, that we could like, bend something with? We got this, uh, it's just a little shroud, it's a piece of aluminum that's, um, you know, like 65 pound thick and 20-something uh, inches long. Just need to put two bends in it, one, like a 75 degree bend. Okay, I'll go right now. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to go get that, get that bent. So I'm going to have to say goodbye to you guys. i got to drive the car. Where's that piece? Oh, no, I'm not going to drive. I'm just going to run. Where's the piece go? This one? Yeah, that one. Let's go. They're about to leave, so we said bring it down there now. They get one of the guys to do it real quick. All right, guys. Well, well, yeah, like 75 degrees. Is that close enough? Yep, about 75, yep. All right, guys. Well, thanks for stopping by. Well, uh, I'm going to keep posting pictures and stuff. I'm also doing a video series on this whole thing. Um, Kevin's been recording along the way. And so we'll have a whole video series where we do 
this whole swap. Oh yeah, Kevin's got to come catalog this. Um, do this whole swap and what it entails and everything. So expect Kevin's those coming. to be coming out in the next week or so. Um, all the little steps along the way that we do. Plus all the comedy. Fly away over there. <laughs> that was not even intentional. <laughs> Plus all the comedy I'm over here. Yeah. <laughs> all right, have a good, have a good one, guys.